If you have your Bibles, would you please stand and turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 13. I'd like to thank Brother Worley for this morning's Sunday school message. How many enjoyed that that was in the Sunday school class? Amen. Acts chapter 13, beginning with verse number 42. And it reads, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. And just one more verse previous, verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Amen. There's people that are hungry. There's people that are longing. There's people that are thirsty. And they don't care who's coming. They don't care if it's, if it's just one person coming. They don't care if it's 5,000 people coming. When, when, they're, when they're finally being fed, what their hearts and what their souls are longing for, they'll come in by the busloads. Amen. Amen. This past week, I had the privilege to be out at senior high camp where I was able to witness God move on the young people of our district and more importantly, the young people of our church. I was privileged to see young people respond to the preaching of the word to make needed changes and needed commitments in their personal walks with God. And I feel I have a message today that I want to challenge us all, including myself. It might not be the longest message, might not be the shortest message you ever hear, but I feel the need to challenge us all to God, uh, this afternoon. Don't miss the message. Amen. Don't miss the message. We can be so caught up on so many things in life, but don't miss the message. Amen. Would you place your Bibles down and pray with me one last time? Lord, we thank you, God, for this day. God, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to be in your house, God, and to be used, oh God, as you have us to. God, we pray, Lord, that every distraction, God, that would beset our minds, God, would be placed aside. God, so we may hear, oh God, and receive what you have for us today. God, we love you and we worship you, God. God, we love you and we praise your name. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Everyone say, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Acts, the 13th chapter, starts out by Paul and Barnabas being ordained to preach the gospel. And it says, immediately they were sent out. First they went to several different countries, but here at the end of chapter 13, the Bible says that they came to Antioch. And that here, that here in Antioch, here on the Sabbath, they went to the synagogue with one purpose, and that was to preach the word of God. They didn't go, they didn't go there for with, a, with an agenda in mind. They didn't go there with any prerequisites or pre, any predetermined ideas of what they wanted to do other than they came to preach to the Jews on the Sabbath the word that God gave them. The Bible says, following the preaching of the word after Paul was done speaking, in verse 42, it says that the Jews got up and left. They didn't tarry around. They didn't wait for a response. They didn't, they didn't change their hearts and lives or, 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 or their mindsets of where they were. It just says they got up and left. The normal practice would have been maybe to, to, to ask questions back and forth. I didn't understand something. Would you explain something a little bit further? There, there was no questions. There was no response. There was no signs of learning. They just got on with their day. No more thinking about the message that they just heard spoken. Church, I'm not advocating that we need to spend every single Sunday as a church day, but that's not a bad idea. Okay, maybe we'll stick there for a little bit. It's not a bad idea to be in church all day on a Sunday. When I grew up, we went to church, and with my dad being the sound man, we went to church real early. Because everybody needed to practice the choir song. Everyone needed to practice their special. 
And so we would, we would go to church at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning. And if, if you had an early rise Easter service, yeah. whoo, 6 a.m., hello. There's no Easter egg hunt that day. It's not a bad idea to spend all day in church though, right? It's not a bad idea to spend all day in church dwelling on the things of God and what, what God would have for us. I don't know about you, but I'm self-employed and I have to work when I have work to do. Last week I took off to be at church camp and I know what's waiting for me tomorrow morning when I wake up. But when I'm in church, I need to be in church. Amen. When I'm in church, I need to be in church. I can't afford to miss a service. I can't afford to miss the message. I need to hear every message that I can possibly hear. And I need to, when his presence comes flowing through this place like it did during song service, like it did during the special that was just sung, I need to touch all of God that I can touch because I can't afford to miss something, church. I can't afford to miss something. I don't know what my next moment is going to be. I don't know what my next day is going to bring. I can't afford to miss it. I need to be like a sponge and soak up all that I can soak up because who knows what tomorrow might bring. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of my attitude, regardless of what happened less than 24 hours ago, I can't sit down on the preacher or sit down on the song service. I can't afford to miss the message, amen? They preached this last week at church camp that we have so much technology in the world and we have so much technology in church. We have Bible apps and Bible software, online Bible commentaries. We have the latest and greatest projection we have the latest and greatest projection screens. We have so many things. The, the message I'm speaking to you today, I put it on my iPad. We have, we have so much technology. And all technology is all well and good. But when the technology becomes more of the focus than the message that's being sent on it, God help our attention spans. God help the motive of why we do what we do. Technology is all great and it makes things so much easier. But when it draws my attention or when it draws my visitor, when it draws someone's away, the attention away from the message, the technology needs to go. Amen. In the latter part of Acts 13, we previously read, it says that the Jews got up and left. And it says the Gentiles came in. It says the Gentiles came in and if you will, they were hungry. It says they went up to Paul and they said, hey, Paul, that same message that you just preached might not have got a whole lot of amens, might not have got a whole lot of response, but next Sunday, next Sabbath, can you come back and you preach the same thing to us? Next Sunday, ne next Sabbath, Paul, can you come in? Can you preach the same thing to us? Because we're hungry for something. We have, we have something missing in our lives and we're hungry for something. And as we pick it up in verse number 44, it says, And the next Sabbath came, almost the whole city came together because they were hungry. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. They were embarrassed. They were jealous. They were embarrassed that they missed out. They saw what others were being blessed in, and they, they were embarrassed at their reaction. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. We turn to the hungry. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have sent thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And when the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Two points I want us to notice here. First, at the beginning of chapter 13, it says Paul and Barnabas traveled to the country of Cyprus. And, 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 and once they were in Cyprus, they went to the city of Paphos. And they began to preach the gospel to the deputy of the city. The deputy was a man who was interested in the gospel. And he was receiving the message but as you know, a sorcerer by the name of Elimus heard the message and seen the change taking place in the deputy's life. The Bible says Elimus did all he could do to interrupt the message. He did all he could do to, to stop or to break the attention of the deputy. It says the sorcerer tried to cause a disturbance to put a stop to the gospel. But it says that Paul rebuked Elimus and by result, a mist and a darkness fell on him causing him to be blind 
for a season. You see, the sorcerer was filled with such an evil. The sorcerer was filled with such a spirit and was just reacting to what he felt to do. The sorcerer noticed a conflict in the spirit that he was familiar with and the spirit that was within Paul and Barnabas. And by result, it says that he tried to cause a disturbance. You see, the sorcerer didn't know any better. He was simply reacting to what he felt to do. But at the end of the chapter, the Jews knew better. You see, the Jews knew what the Sabbath was and what the Sabbath was meant to do. It was set aside as a sabbatical. God, you gave me six days, now I'm going to give one day back to you. God, you've given me so much of my six days. God, let, let, me, let me go ahead and just give something back to you. Let me give one of my days back to you. Let me set it aside as being yours. You see, they knew the order. They, they did it every single week. You go, to, you go to the synagogue, someone reads the law, then someone comes with a word from God. But their focus, church, was distorted. To them, the synagogue was just the fringe. And at the center was their selfish wants and desires. In their minds, they needed to go get their required church service out of the way so they could get on with what they really wanted to do. They were so set on the quote-unquote requirement that they missed the spirit and they missed the message altogether. God, help us every single time these church doors are open. God, let me put my agenda aside. Every single time I have the opportunity, because that's what it is, it's an opportunity. Every single time I, got, I have the privilege to be in this house, God, let me, put my, let me put my mindset aside. God, let me get my vision retooled back to you. God, let me help, help me, God, get my focus back to you. Church isn't how I end my week, but church is how I start my week. Amen. Church isn't how I end my week. It's not how I end my weekend, but it's, it's how I start my week. I don't know what I'm going to face on Monday, but I know where I'm going to be on Sunday. I don't know, I don't know what hell and what demon is going to be waiting for me on my doorstep on Monday morning, but I know where I'm going to be on Sunday afternoon. I know where I'm going to be at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Amen. Church is, church is how I break up the monotony of my week on Wednesday night. And Brother Worley hit it so perfectly in the Sunday school lesson with the reference to the old seed and the old prayers. Church isn't my requirement, but church, church is my privilege. I think a lot of times we get that backwards. We think to ourselves, well, it's my choice. I, I, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, 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 you know, it is your choice. You can do whatever you want. But somebody paid a price that you were able to sit there. Someone gave you that opportunity to sit there. It wasn't just, well, hey, you were born, you can just do it. Someone paid that price. God, help me get my focus back so I can see the message so clearly. You see, point number one is that the Jews knew better, but they allowed their focus to change, and by result, they missed the message. And point number two is found in Isaiah 55. Verses 9 through 11. For as high, or for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. In other words, church, God's message will be preached. And God's message will be preached. God's message will be preached. I'll say it again. God's message will be preached. And God's purpose will be accomplished. Amen. God's word will be preached. And his purpose will be accomplished. It's not my, but it's my choice whether I want to get with it or not, so to speak. As hard as that may be to hear, as hard as that may be to realize, the choice has always been, and the choice will always be mine. The choice is not up to God. The choice is not up to pastor. The choice is not up to my family. The choice isn't up to my coworker or my work schedule. The, 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 the choice is not up to anybody else but the choice solely lies with me. I've used the example many times before that, that God is the perfect gentleman. You'll never find anyone that's more of a perfect gentleman than God. He never forces his will. 
He never forces his love or his desire on anyone. He simply invites. He simply asks. He extends the invitation. And he completely leaves the decision up to me. He doesn't force his will. He doesn't force his love. He just invites. And he waits for me to make my decision. Amen. As you'd stand, as, a, as you musicians would come, I told you I wouldn't be long. In preparation for the service and prayer, I felt so strongly, and I feel it so strongly even now, that God is leading this congregation, God is leading this church to a time of focused prayer, leading us to a time of realigning our vision once again and our mindsets back to him. Church, when I go, to the, when I go past the fringe of everything that's just on the fringe of my life, and I go past layer after layer after layer, when I dig past all the superficial and I get down to the center of it all, what do I find? Do I find more of me or do I find more of God? Amen, when you dig past all the, all the agendas that you have every single day, every single to-do list, every single thing that, that, that's so important in your life and you dig past it and you dig past layer after layer after layer and you get down to the core you get down to the, the, down to the very center. What do you find there? Do you find more of God? Or do you find more of self? And then as these altars are open today, I invite us, let's take a time and self-examine ourselves, our thoughts, our motives, our vision. When we get down to the very bottom of it all, down to the very center of what things really matter? Do we find a mirror that's reflecting ourselves or a mirror that's reflecting God? Amen. These altars are open. You can feel free to come here. You can feel free to kneel at your seat. But don't let this moment, don't let this privilege, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Don't miss the message like they did at the latter part of Acts 13. Don't just walk out and say, well, thank God we got out before noon. We got out before one o'clock. I'd rather have a short message and long order call any day of the week. Hey, Amen. These orders are open. Let's take some time. Let's examine our hearts, our thoughts, and our motives and realign our vision back to where it needs to be. Amen. Let's come.